Hello, and welcome to the GP Strategies Performance Consulting Team's video blog. Today, we have the pleasure of starting a new series on optimizing learning in the manufacturing environment. And we're doing that with two of our esteemed colleagues, Deborah Boyley and Tina Mullen. Deborah has over 30 years of experience in the manufacturing industry and has been working in the role of performance analyst for our client for the past six years. Tina has been working as a performance analyst with our client for the past two years and has served as a performance consultant for a broad range of industries, including telecommunications, pharmaceutical, banking, retail, and manufacturing across her 35 year career. And I'm Rocky Ellens. I will be your host and moderator for this series. Deborah and Tina have been and are working in partnership with one of our manufacturing clients, as I mentioned before, and we have asked them to share their process and insights gained regarding optimizing learning paths. Deborah and Tina, thank you for taking the time to share your story and welcome to this series. Thanks, Rocky. Thanks, Rocky. Tina, how about we start with you by sharing a bit of your client's background and how that led to your work in the Learning Path Optimization Program? Yep, that sounds great, Rocky. And Deborah, please um, feel free to jump in uh, as you would like. So I, I think I'll start by saying, you know, once upon a time, um, being part of a skilled trade was viewed as a respected and even an honorable career choice. So much so, people actively competed for the available manufacturing jobs. Now, this was the case here in the United States, but our landscape has really changed over these past decades since the manufacturing boom that started during the end of World War II. Now, I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise when I say that the number of individuals choosing a skilled trade or any blue collar type work um, is not anywhere close to as high as it used to be. Study after study by organizations such as the US Department of Labor, People Ready, uh, Microsoft, and the like, all report that jobs in the skilled trades are not perceived as lucrative, stable, nor as cool or desirable um, as jobs that are available in software, computers, or any other typically white collar roles. And that's despite the highly competitive, I'm sorry, competitive pay that's offered for manufacturing jobs and the affordability of trade schools um, as compared to college. Now, also, um, younger folks are simply not exposed to the trades like they used to be because most school systems have eliminated or severely depleted courses like automotive shop and woodworking from their curriculums. That leaves the up and coming generations as not having a feel as to whether they would like to work in the skill trades and those not so cool factors are made even worse. Now the bottom line here is that the available talent pool is shrinking at an alarming rate for manufacturing. Also, consider that the aging workforce for most manufacturing organizations are uh, that they're facing. Um, the post-World War II baby boomer generation um, who have made a career in manufacturing are starting to retire, and they're taking with them their skills, their expertise, their experience, and know-how. Couple that with the deficit for new employees to fill vacant roles, means that there is simply no one for our retiring workforce to transfer their knowledge, skills, and know-how to. These two factors created an urgency at our client to do something. And on top of that, general economic constraints and financial performance expectations um, that our company was facing caused leadership to look to try to find ways to do more with fewer employees. So about four years ago now, um, our client uh, wanted to start this learning path initiative for critical high population manufacturing job roles. So that's the backdrop. Um, Deborah, how about if I turn it over to you to take it from here? I can try to do my best. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Tina. Well, just as Tina has explained, our client had all these events 
they were converging into a, a, a large um, labor situation of shortages of people with the correct skill base that they needed. So they came and they asked GP strategies to help them to consider different ways in preparing their workforce to do these various critical manufacturing roles. As you can imagine, discovering and defining core and common skill sets was a very long-term effort. So let me explain what we did at a higher level right now, and then we can dig into some of those elements. First, working with the operations and the learning teams, we identified and documented some skills and knowledge for those selected critical manufacturing roles that our client was looking at. Next, we evaluated those skills and knowledges to identify them into natural groupings of the different tasks that they perform. It was a lot like having a jumbled box of Legos and all we had to do was sort them out, everything in their right kit. So some were very easy and others, well, not so much. Uh, we had to get this right because the natural groupings would help us find the, all those different commonalities across the roles. With that done for one of the critical roles, we began defining the skills and knowledge through the actions and behaviors that we would see on that manufacturing floor. This was really the hardest part of this because not every role would use that skill or the knowledge in the same way. That meant that we needed to define those performance of that skill or behavior. Defining the performance meant we needed to define levels for that job or career progression. What does that look like? What did we expect or need someone or how did we need somebody to perform that specific skill as they progressed within their role? Like when someone is in, in a new role, when they're fresh out of training, we would call this job role ready. They're ready to go at it and, and hit the floor running. We also, well, we needed to define what proficiency looked like uh, when one has had been in that job for a little while, all the way to being in a role for a very significant time. So this became our job role, our, our job role level progressions um, of proficiencies. This action of defining what the performance should look like for each skill and knowledge as the employee progresses through their role helped to level set on the job performance, not just for the employee, but for their supervisor too. While the large concept of this work is for the entire employee life cycle, that is from hiring to retiring, we focused our effort on that job role ready stage of the progression just because that's where the bulk of the work um, actions happen. Remember, our challenge is hiring folks to backfill all these retiring employees. So we needed to concentrate on those things that the new employees need to be able to do with minimal supervision. Yeah, and Deborah, if I could just um, jump for in for a moment with a side <laughs> note here. Um, I, I just wanna make it a point that Deborah is deliberately saying minimal supervision. And I think we all understand that training can only simulate so much in the classroom. Um, and we cannot underestimate the importance of the workplace and peer coaches, um, as well as on the job learning. And I, I think this is an important distinction for manufacturing roles because the training delivery team can only get an employee so far before that employee needs to put things into practice on the manufacturing floor. You know, it's really one thing to practice, you know, drilling, let's say, on a piece of scrap metal. And it's a whole nother thing to do that same action on a real car, a real airplane, a, a real train, or whatever it is that we're manufacturing. Not to mention trying to remember that million and one other things that you know someone has learned in the training that needs to be put into practice. It's a good point. And that is exactly why transitioning is in our model we built. Yeah, and how many times have we heard managers um, say that training is lacking, right? And that's probably because training can be theory and knowledge building and not so much application. But the process that you're laying out here seems to be addressing that problem. Well, 
Yes, Rocky, it does. It level sets the on-the-job performance expectation. We really emphasize the point with all of the SMEs and the operations teams we work with. We remind them that training our people is truly a team sport. We all have a role in training our people. Okay, now let's see, where was I? Yeah, you were just explaining that you and the team had defined performance expectations for skills and knowledge items. So the employee and the managers are aligned. That's right, Rocky. Let's see. Uh, so with the proficiency levels defined, the team begins to work through evaluating and mapping existing training. What are they doing today to these proficiencies? Needed into that into the role that that employee was going to be working to get them job role ready. We are asking ourselves, does the training help us to achieve that proficiency level we need for each thing? That helped us to be sure that the training was focused on and contained what was actually needed for that role. This map of training becomes the learning path for that job role. We'll go through the details on that part of the process in a bit, but let me just share a couple of results of the initial work that we have done. So over a four year period, we have evaluated and validated to create about 550 job role ready learning paths. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but remember we're in manufacturing. So we will have one job code that is more like the umbrella job role. Those roles make in, may break into many production lines or specialty areas and sometimes even further based on the state or the local requirements that our manufacturing um, company needs to make. Thus creating multiple learning paths for that job role for those uniquenesses. Through all these learning paths, we have now been able to identify 35 overarching competency groups. Think of these groups as buckets. These 35 buckets contain 230 specific competencies to allow for job role nuances and specifics. During the same four year time frame, the team identified gaps on learning paths. We partnered with our learning design team and we created around 70 new or modified learning solutions that address these specific skills and knowledge as defined in those proficiency levels that we needed for those roles that we worked on. Wow, four years, 550 job roles, 35 competencies, 230 manufacturing, uh, 35 competency groups, 230 manufacturing competencies. That is a huge, huge amount of work. <laughs> But but tell me, what was the ultimate goal of gathering all this data and what is your next step? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> so Rocky, in a nutshell, there were two main outcomes that resulted from our effort on these critical roles. First, we established a standardized learning model for the client based on this on these employees career cycles, the job role progression levels. Second, we drafted a usable tool to document these skills and knowledges by those progression levels with performance expectations for each level in the role. We started thinking of this as a catalog of manufacturing skills and knowledge, and it is allowing us to map the core and common skills across similar job roles. I think this is a good point to stop before we dive in too much. And we can show you how the tool evolved and how we're going to use it today. Boy, I'm looking forward to that, but we're at the end of our time for today. So let's begin with that. Let's pick up with that in our next session. Sounds like a plan. Sounds great. Great. That's what we'll do then. Deborah and Tina, thanks so much for sharing the background of the work you're doing to optimize learning for manufacturing roles. And thank you to all of you who have joined us today. Be sure to tune in to session two, where we'll continue our conversation with Deborah and Tina to learn more about the role they traveled 
as they worked to optimize learning for manufacturing job roles. Have a great day and stay safe.